Have you ever played support and felt like the game is impossible to win because your teammates are just way too bad to carry? If your answer is no, then you've never played support before. And if you answered yes, then you definitely need to watch this guide. Here, you'll learn some of the best tactics our challenger expert Hector uses to easily carry as a support in low elo. You may be a support, but there's nothing stopping you from carrying almost every game with the right tactics. And throughout the guide, we'll also be firing questions your way so you can see if you're able to make challenger level decisions. Do you belong in your elo, or do you know how to climb like a challenger support can? Let's find out. But real quick, here's a snippet from one of our brand new Master in Minutes courses our subscribers love over at Skillcaps. For example, if both sides are staring at each other like so, neither has an inherent advantage in a 2v2 since they're all quite ready to fight if anyone moves forward. But good supports will constantly try to skill check the enemy support by moving to an area where they're still parallel with their own ADC, but the enemy is no longer parallel relative to them. You can effectively force 2v1 fights this way. To access the full course, which are filled with gaming winning concepts just like this one, then click the discount link below to start climbing climbing stupidly fast. Anyways, back to the video. Let's immediately test your bot lane matchup knowledge. Which side do you think wins this 2v2 matchup? Let's hear what he has to think. Caitlyn does very well into Aphelios from my understanding because Aphelios likes shorter range battles, but Caitlyn can maintain her range very well. Not only that, but Braum stylistically counters Uh, Braum stylistically counters Leona, I try to go in, and uh, he's just going to counter my engage right, plus the Caitlyn has cleanse. This is a really rough lane. This is one of the biggest pain points every engage support has. When you're in a lane where you lose and can't engage, then what are you even good for? You've all been there before. You're playing something like Alistair versus Morgana who black shields every engage. You just slowly but surely lose the lane without being able to do anything about it. So what's the difference between a challenger player in this situation and you? Absolutely nothing, and you're about to see why. As Hector plays out this early part of the lane, let's hear his thoughts again. So Aphelios should not be hitting the wave here at all. You'll notice I'm not even trying to fight back here. I think us trying to fight for level 2 is really dumb. So like, they got it, right? It's okay that they got it. Look, they're not doing anything with it. Like, they're not even zoning us from any minions. Like, this like, rush to level 2 stuff that people go on and on about is just like fake. Like we said, it's not some crazy macro that makes him better than you. More often than not, challenger players are better because they know when they should just do nothing. A lot of diamond and below Leonas would only be thinking about how they want to engage. Then they instinctively fight for level 2, even though they're in a losing matchup. Then they try to engage, and lose the 2v2 because they're counterpicked. Not only that, but because they fought for the wave, it'll end up staying in the middle of the lane for longer, which means that Caitlyn can continue to harass Aphelios very easily. Now, because Aphelios is running low on HP, Leona can never re-engage, and yeah, you get the point. A butterfly effect of terrible consequences can occur off a single decision. All Hector did so far is analyze the matchup and know that he can't force an opportunity. He'll have to wait patiently for one. And due to his patience, look how chill this lane looks for Aphelios right now. The wave is in a perfect spot for him to farm, and the Caitlyn isn't harassing nearly as much as she could be. What comes next is precisely why being patient as an engaged support will always have value in low elo. These are platinum players, but take a look at both of their catastrophic mistakes. Their entire win condition is to simply never give Hector a good engage. If they don't, they instantly win the matchup. As they push, Braum wastes his E on a bit of damage from Aphelios. Not only that, but the Caitlyn doesn't respect Hector while her support main peeling tool is down. Needless to say, this type of mistake is exactly what Hector's patience was for. He instantly jumps into engage, and the fight is a breeze because their opponents made such game-losing errors. And this is one of the biggest keys to learning how to properly play and engage support in solo queue. Players often want to learn how to engage and get kills, but no one wants to learn when to show restraint and not go in. In many matchups, you'll maybe get two or three opportunities at most to capitalize on your opponent's mistakes. But if you're always low HP because you want to fight all the time, then you'll miss those game-winning opportunities. So learn to do nothing, and you will achieve way more engages in your games. Anyway, that was an amazing start to the lane, and all that's left to do is snowball. We're going to test you with three back-to-back -back questions to see if you know how to punish from here. Hector and Aphelios crash the wave. What is going to happen to the wave now? You should immediately know it'll bounce back towards your side of the lane, away from the safety of Caitlyn's tower. Okay, next question. All the enemy bot lane summoners are down. What wave tactic should you utilize on that rebounding wave? 
Again, you should immediately have thought of freezing. Yes, that is your ADC's decision ultimately, but if they're smart and decide to freeze, you should be ready to help them do it. Freezing will give you way more room in the lane to go for an engage and score a repeat kill. Great, now for our final question. Not only can you win 2v2, but the wave pushing away from Caitlyn means she's also susceptible to ganks. So you want to deny vision to enable your teammates to come kill her. Where should that counter vision go? In the river, of course. Using sweeper or placing pinks near mid enables them to roam down potentially. Controlling the river is also great for enabling your jungler. You wouldn't want to autopilot and place your control ward in the tri brush, for example. That would be a waste. Now, how easy does all that sound when we break it down step by step? And that's exactly what Hector does. After basing, he books it towards mid to shadow his mid laner for a bit. He also makes sure Jarvan can't take this scuttle crab for vision, then he heads back bottom. There, he makes sure this rebounding wave freezes away from Caitlyn. Since she's low, this forces her to take a terrible recall timing. That's a ton of experience she's about to miss, and sets up the lane state we talked about. While she's gone from lane, Hector can also evacuate and leave his Aphelios alone. He patrols the river for a bit. He probably should have used his sweeper here, but it's still good. He's just making sure no wards are going down and that the scuttle isn't being taken either. And now, after that entire sequence, let's hear about what happens. Wait, my grave should just wait here, no? What? What? I set this up perfectly for him, hello? Ah, nothing quite like the sound of Hector's misery. To help us illustrate an important learning point, of course, as a support, you can't make plays on your own, and it can be one of the most frustrating roles in the game for that reason alone. Sometimes your teammates won't follow up off the good plays that you're making, but the key to climbing is consistently making those plays over and over again. Setting up good situations is bound to be rewarded eventually, and Hector didn't have to wait long. Although his graves had zero interest in some free gold, his dragon definitely did. Saul comes down and capitalizes on Hector's vision control and freeze setup, and they're rewarded with yet another kill. That was an excellent early start from Hector to stomp that lane. We'll come back to that game in a moment, but let's hop into another match for another critical support tip. This isn't a skill support players tend to learn, but understanding it will allow you to carry games infinitely harder. Every other role should be trying to farm minion waves in jungle camps as efficiently as possible, while also trying to have map pressure. A simple example of this would be a mid laner pushing in a wave before they roam. That way they can impact the map while the wave is pushing back into them. This causes them to miss as few CS as possible while also being active on the map. Another example would be a jungler pathing to gank a lane that is in close proximity to the camps that are spawning for them. This allows them to gank and farm efficiently at the same time. As a support, you don't have to worry about any of that. You never farm, and you can abuse that to your advantage. You should often be very willing to trade your life, health, or even summoner spells to waste someone's time. They will generally lose way more than you do, which will be a big advantage to your team in the long run. Let's take a look at some examples. As Hector is roaming around as Karma, he sees Elise in top lane ganking. He opens up Tab and sees that she hasn't cleared much of her jungle yet. Then she recalls in that top brush. Basically, now he doesn't know where she is. This means that she could either be going top or bottom off her recall. So we were owning them, but I can't play too aggressive right now. Elise could be coming. Hearing his commentary makes it very clear he's actively tracking where Elise potentially might go. So what he does next is definitely on purpose. So you can tell Elise is probably down here. Rakan is starting to sweep. Probably feels very confident that he has a teammate in the area. There's the engage. I probably... I didn't think it was coming from here. What? Tragically, his game plan was based on her coming from the tri brush. That way, he could bait the gank, waste her time, and not blow flash. Unfortunately, Hector is completely blind and missed her going through the river, but the point stands. High elo supports are constantly trying to bait their opponents to waste time. If Elise ganks bottom and doesn't get a kill, she gets absolutely nothing. There's no bot side camps to steal, and they're too weak to do dragon even if they get priority right now. But anyway, this is why I wanted to do it. Look how much she's losing. Like we said, as a support, you should be very willing to take some risks to waste your opponent's time during critical moments like that one. Here's another example. After winning a 2v2 fight in bottom, Hector and his Jin get collapsed on by the enemy mid laner. Galio kills Jin. Now let's tune into Hector's thought process. Just wasting this guy's time. His wave is getting pushed in over there. And I'm maintaining the freeze here, right? Again, from a mid laner's point of view, this is a massive mistake by the Galio. There's no way he ever kills Karma here. Meanwhile, you can see how many waves he'll miss in mid. And like Hector said, Galio should also be crashing this wave to bounce it back for his bot lane. Instead, he's so tunneled on the kill that he's also failing at that. On top of that, Galio is being collapsed on as we speak. 
And now am I... What? How am I dead? What am I dead to? What? Is he running Scorch, by the way? He's running Scorch, I see. Couldn't have seen that one coming, huh? Anyway, as Dumbest Hector looked in this example, and even the last one, we picked these two attempts at wasting his opponent's time for a reason. You're going to make mistakes and miss things, and you will probably die a silly death, or you'll miscalculate how much damage you can actually take. This is inherently a risky strategy, but learning how to be massive bait to waste your opponent's time, or even to win skirmishes, is one of the best ways every challenger support carries games. And you will be much more effective at doing so if you also learn the fundamentals of how every other role wants to farm, and move around the map like we talked about already. Our fourth tip that we're going to talk about is the importance of learning all the skill and build options you have as a support. Let's hear Hector's thoughts in this matchup he's about to get into before breaking it down. So Seraphine's support, from my understanding, can go a lot of points into Q. However, the enemy team is all very short range, very all in. They need to kill us or they lose the fight. Like all we need to do is survive the fight. So what I'm thinking is I'm at best going to put one, maybe two points in my Q and just straight up max my W. So as long as I keep my teammates alive, we literally don't lose. So many players aren't aware that you can literally win a game just from this simple of a decision. Support has probably some of the most flexible skill orders and rune setups in the game, but it isn't abused by so many lower elo supports. Morgana, Lulu, Rakan, Thresh, Sona, Soraka, Leona, Janna, Karma, and more can all have varying builds or skill orders depending on their matchup. Before giving some more examples, let's see just how potent Hector's adaptation was. Look at him walk right up to Rakan, letting him get a clean engage off. Uh, I just wanted to show you an example of what that would look like. They literally can't kill me, so they have no way of winning. I literally just walked into their full combo, right? Do you see how with Guardian and W Max, there's literally nothing the enemy bot lane can do? Sometimes you don't need to be a great player to climb. You just need to know the correct build order for that specific game, and it's almost impossible to lose your lane. For example, champions like Rakan and Sona can go Guardian and Max their shields to neutralize engage supports, basically just like Hector did here. Or Leona, for example, can put some early points in her E versus champs like Thresh or Janna. They knock her out of her E's animation, but with more points in E, Leona can re-engage before their knockbacks are up. Learning all these adaptations will make your life infinitely easier as a support, and we highly recommend thinking about what options are available to your main champions. Our final tip will be trying to learn how to pick up enemy patterns to punish more often. Players in lower elos especially tend to be very predictable in how they play if you just pay attention. For example, some players always juke left to dodge skill shots, or if you're not visible in lane, they'll always use all of their spells to push the wave, giving you an opportunity to punish. There's definitely a ton of patterns you can pick up in your games. Let's take a look at an example of one. Back to the Leona game from the start. Hector is trying to cheese the Caitlyn trying to crash the wave. Eh, this is really forced. I don't like it. I don't like it. We got her cleanse. She is trolling out of her mind. Any of you could easily tell just how scared this Caitlyn is of Hector's Leona. That cleanse was as insecure as it gets. Hector is going to use that info a bit later on. I might just alter. It'll get her cleanse. She doesn't seem very good at using cleanse. So if I just alter, she's going to waste it. Watch. So we don't have to commit here, by the way. We do not have to commit. So this one is a little less obvious, but this wasn't a cleanse-worthy engage. Look how far Aphelios is. He can't follow up properly. Plus, Braum was free and could just dash to Caitlyn and shield her. But Hector knew that Caitlyn would definitely panic and waste her most important defensive CD versus Leona. Now he can take advantage of her being down a crucial summoner after he clears this ward. I'm going to walk this way. They're going to think I'm going back around. By the way, if you don't know, we teach this in our warding course. Clearing stealth wards leaves residual vision. You can use this to fake out your opponents, giving them false information. Just keep in mind, though, that control wards don't do that for some reason. So don't try this when clearing those. Anyway, since they thought Hector was going back around, Caitlyn and Braum played a bit too far forward in lane. And because Caitlyn's cleanse was down, Hector knew he could commit, and they score an easy double kill. That's a wrap on this one, guys. You definitely need to start applying some of these tips in your games. See you next time.